Welcome to Just Chopsin Podcast. And today's guest is Zach Person. Um, it's a bit of a first for me. I've got a guy sitting in a van recording a podcast mm. and also my cousin, my wingman, he's been called away on a family emergency so he couldn't actually make it tonight. So he told me about half an hour ago, so we're a bit... <laughs> we're, it's just me and you, Zach. Sweet, yeah. We're, we're on the road right now. Uh, so where where are you? The, the, van, the tour van was the... Uh, we're out actually in West Texas right now, but the tour van was the quietest spot uh, there's uh, too much noise going on by stages. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Are you playing a big gig or? Yeah, we're doing a festival out here. Ah, right. Okay. All right. Cool, man. So you're from Austin, Texas? Yes. Yeah, Austin, Texas. Um, okay. Originally originally born in uh, New Jersey, uh, so like Northeast uh, United States, and um, moved to uh, North Carolina and then finally Houston, Texas, about three hours out from Austin. Oh, the picture's gone. And, uh, and then moved to uh, Austin in 2017. My drummer was born actually in the same small town, 20,000 people in, um, uh, what that? again, like a, born in the same small town. He moved directly to Austin in 2017. So we got here, ended up uh, joining basically a band together and finding out that we were from the same tiny little town on the opposite side of the U.S. All right, so cool. I meant to be. Yeah, that's Jack, how would you say his surname, Weeble or Weibel? Uh, Jake Weibel. Oh, Jake Weibel, okay, I wrote down Jack, okay. Jake Weibel, so you're just a two-piece band then? Yeah, two-piece. We've, we've gone through a couple different iterations of the band and um, or the, of the live band setup, and um, I've I've done solo for a while, and then uh, so three piece, and then a four piece, five piece, and um, during the pandemic, it uh, just made sense for us to go down to a duo, and then um, I really we really like the format, and um, it makes it makes everything really efficient. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, you don't have to rely on so many people. Absolutely, um, and, and and Jake is, uh, you know, Jake's been, like I said, playing with me ever since I, I moved to Austin, and um, the relationship we have is, it's just, it's more than, a, you know, just, you know, a, a hired sort of drummer situation. Yeah. You know, he's, he, we're super tight, and um, you know, he he brings so much to to what I do musically, um, like from, uh, I mean, a, a percussive standpoint and arrangement. Yeah, yeah. So I take it you play on a loop. Do you play with a loop pedal? You know, uh, I have a loop uh, that I that I use in the show, but it's um, that's really interesting. We, we I tried to uh, use loops and octaves and incorporate all that sort of stuff that uh, you normally find with with music musical duos. Um, try to incorporate all that stuff, and you know, I found out that it was just. It was too. Uh, it was too stressful trying to run all that stuff in the middle of a live show when I'm like, you know, singing and trying to interact with the crowd, and and I, it was keeping me from, you know, the freedom of being able to be a guitarist and be a guitar player. Yeah. And so um, we ended up making the move to now Jake triggers um, bass and synth and all that stuff. He, he's triggering all that and keyboard. He has all that set up behind his drums and, and yeah. it runs. And I can just be free to be a guitar player, which is what oh, right, cool. I enjoy doing. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool then. So your self-titled debut album came out in April. Was it April this year? Yes, April second, we uh, released the the album, um, and that was that was after a long process. Uh, you know, a, a year prior, we'd released five song EP. And just as you know, we were about to head out for a tour, and then starting to promote that EP, everything got shut down, and so we took the year to write seven. You're frozen on me. <laughs> this is, uh, and back. No, not back. You're gone.
All right, guys. So we had some technical problems with Zach's interview there. Um, he had to move to a different location due to his phone overheating in his van. So we'll continue the interview as if we started from new and uh, see you on the other side. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your patience. So welcome to Just Chops and Podcast. And tonight we have Zach Person. We are a man down because my cousin David uh, has been called away for a family emergency. So it's just me and you, Zach. We need to make the most of it. Thank you. Thanks for so, having me on. Yeah, no worries, man. We've got you out of your van and because uh, you were in the middle of a festival, I believe. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we've just driven off location to, uh, yeah, do this. So. Get this in. So you're from Austin, Texas. You're 24 years old. Absolutely. And you've got, a, you've got an album and uh, you're banging it out. You're rocking some tunes. Yeah, it's a 12-song album we just put out April 2nd. Um, you know, a, a year prior to that, we had put out an EP, five songs, and then um, just as we were about to go out and tour on it and start promotions for the EP, uh, COVID, everything shut down. And so we took the rest of that year to uh, put together the rest of the album. And then here we are a year later um, releasing it and now going out to play. Yeah, lucky enough to be able to perform it live now, I guess. Yes, yeah. Our, our, um, you know, after a year of, of sitting stagnant, our schedules is, is packed now. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's the same. Everybody, all, all uh, musicians are, are trying to get out through the gate now as, as fast as they can, you know. I mean, especially in the UK. I see you, you've got a UK or a European tour coming up. Yeah, so, yeah, is, yeah we're heading off uh, August 25th. Is that all still going ahead? Yeah, yeah, everything, everything is still go. We're our whole team is like watching daily um, the reports and updates, but everything is still go thus far. Yeah, cool, man. So I was re oh yeah, yeah, I was listening to your stuff earlier on uh, Spotify, and your first single "Can't Stop Running" It's a pretty, pretty uh, good track. So what, yeah. what, what are your main influences there then? You know, uh, I've I've just always always played and been inspired by blues music. That's the foundation of of um, I think all of my my musical you know knowledge and everything. It, it all stems from uh, blues and, and rock music. And um, you know, I just wanted a uh, kind of a, a delta slide sounding song, and uh, I think every uh, guitar player's instinct is to just do that big, you know, slide up to the twelfth fret and make a, you know, in an open tuning and uh, just kind of having fun with with that sort of riff and, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, spitting out ideas and, and <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish. I mean, I've tr been trying to play guitar now for two years, but <laughs> I'm nowhere near getting yeah, any slides yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the most proficient slide player, but I can. I can get through the tunes with it. Yeah, cool. So, and I, I read on your bio then you appeared with Buddy Guy and Robert Cray. Yes, yeah, I um, played with uh, Buddy Guy. He was uh, coming through a run of shows through Texas, and uh, my my actual uh, my a good acquaintance and buddy uh, and buddy uh, Quinn Sullivan. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but. He uh he's he's like been uh, championed by by a buddy guy for a long time and been out on the road with him since he was like thirteen. Okay. And um then I've known him uh, through through social media as we we've, we've kept in touch over the years and uh yeah and he invited me out and got to chat with buddy guy for uh for a good minute backstage and listen to some old stories about like, Eric Clapton and Steve Ray Vaughan and. Uh, and then he asked me to come out and, and uh, we ended up playing like the last, I think, two or three songs, uh, all of us on stage. Um, and then he walked off and left us all on stage and like, so keep going. Uh, and then, yeah, and then we've opened, I've uh, been fortunate to yeah, open uh, for Robert Cray yeah. uh, in 2019. And so, uh, again, just another, another legend, another uh, musician full of, you know, a lot of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so how old were you when you picked up a guitar then? You, you know, you claim to be not quite that proficient, but from what I heard, you're, uh, you're pretty good. Um, yeah, I, uh, 
I picked up guitar when I was 10 years old. I had started skateboarding when I was like eight. And um, then at a, lo a local skate parks, they would invite out these heavy punk and rock bands to come you know, play at the parks while everybody's skating. And so I was seeing that and listening to that uh, you know, at you know, eight, nine, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And so that naturally made me gravitate towards picking up the electric guitar. Okay, cool, man. So you, uh, your earlier, earlier influences were like skate, skate rock, skate punk rock. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the, the Tony Hawk pro video games with like yeah. you know, ACDC and everybody in the background, TNT yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, and the offspring and stuff. Yeah, Wolf Mother, all that sort of stuff, yeah. Yeah, wicked. Yeah, so not really uh, 100% blues influence then. I mean, if you listen uh, to all that stuff at a young age. Yeah, th that's where it all started uh, was with, with kind of that stuff and, and Black Sabbath and Zeppelin. And um, when I first, so I was playing guitar for about two years and then, uh, or a year and a half, and then started taking lessons from this guy, Baxter Clement. And he's, uh, you'll know him from Casino Guitars. They have a, a big YouTube channel now. Okay. And, but uh, yeah, he's, he taught me how to play. And our, our first lesson, he's like, what are you listening to? He's like, okay, this is good stuff. He's like, but I think you should go deeper. And he's like, your only homework for tonight is just go listen to Clapton and Steve, Steve Ray Vaughan and B.B. King. And like, after that, I was like hooked. I w went from just, you know, kind of playing riffs on, uh, the, the beginning guitar head and and then like every every day after school coming home and getting on the internet and looking up you know uh, YouTube videos of all these yeah, legends yeah. trying to figure out how to play like them yeah uh, yeah well you you're lucky enough to uh, to have YouTube I guess I mean back in my day there wasn't any such thing you know so yeah. everything was you had to either watch it on TV or on VCR. And uh, try and learn it that way. I listen to the radio hours on end, hoping for another rerun of your favorite song. But yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So, and I see on your bio as well, oh, on your album actually, you got a song called Crossroads. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. is that a sort of a tribute song to Robert Johnson? Because I mean, Robert Johnson, he's a very mythical figure in the blues music scene. Absolutely. You know? Not really too much is known about him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, did a lot of research and studying and digging into his story. And um, through that process, kind of, yeah, I got inspired by that that story and, and wanted to, you know, I started thinking, oh, you know, it would be cool to, to do a, a tune. Uh, yeah, like you said, to pay tribute to him, but, but also, like, from my perspective, if we well, like, you know, I started thinking, what would I do if I was in his position, you know, in, here in 2021, 2020? And, um, and so that, that's kind of, you know, tells how I would interact with that sort of journey and situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Clapton wrote a song called Crossroads as well. Eh? Yeah, or, uh, or he covered, he covered Robert Johnson's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's a big, big blues artist. Who would you really like to play with? Then. I mean, you played with Buddy Guy. I mean, it doesn't get really much better than Buddy Guy at the moment, you know. Obviously, there's Clapton and stuff, but who would you really like to collaborate with then, rather than? You know, um, man, there's so many, uh, so many talented people. I mean, like from a more modern standpoint, like I love you know people like Dan Arbach from the Black Keys, Jack White. Um, love all their stuff uh chris stapleton actually okay um, yeah he, he's a phenomenal songwriter um man yeah i mean there, there's so many so many uh big acts that uh you know there's actually a guy here in austin texas and he goes by uh not goes by his name is dave dave Sher s c h e r and I've, okay. I've been fortunate to be able to collaborate with him He's not um, globally uh, known, but he's one of the best guitarists like that exists right now. And he lives here in Austin. He okay. uh, tours with Eric Johnson regularly. Yeah. Um, just, I don't know, if Eric Johnson vouches for him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a new guy on the scene also from the UK. His name is Chris Buck. Have you heard of Chris Buck? 
Yeah, Chris Buck's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's he's making some noise now. Eh? He's he's also a great guitar player. I've been following some of his stuff on uh, YouTube and that. You know, he does a uh, like a Friday night session, mm. or he goes through some of his uh, leads or his, um, his leads, his riffs and stuff, and then he breaks it down, shows you how to play it, shows you what tones he's made and stuff. Yeah, he's really good. It's quite uh, quite interesting. Quite also, interesting to see. Have you got anything like that in the pipeline? YouTube channel? Yeah, you know, um, I think now that, I mean, as things are picking up, we, we're going to have a lot of content and stuff, a lot of road vlogs. We're just going to try to, you know, keep it interesting. Yeah, yeah. Keep it fun. That's the main thing. <laughs> so I also noticed that you, um, you're you an equity partner in Black Denim Records. I mean, your, is your album coming out, has come out on Black Denim Records? Absolutely, yeah, and I had to put on the the black denim the jacket. Black denim, yeah. Are you got denim on denim? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that was, you know, um, I moved to Austin, like I said, in, in 2017, and um, had kind of um, done a lot in Houston, which again is about three hours out from Austin, and um, everything was. You know, people always talk about like the Houston music scene versus Austin. Like, I mean. Austin is just, it's, I mean, even size wise, uh, it's like a smaller footprint of a city. And so everything is just very condensed into one small, you know, uh, like area, uh, yeah. radius, you know, and uh, yeah. geographically. And so there's just, there's so much music happening in, in like a small, um, you know, area. And so uh, it was, it made sense for me to be here. And um, about six months into living in Austin, I met my manager, Christopher Durst, and um, soon after, his his producing partner, uh, Will Lacanto, and he was in he was in two big '80s bands, uh, Information Society and T42, and um, so he has that big you know that electronic background, which is you know uh, kind of made its way into my music, and which I appreciate, um, but the three of us kind of early on realized that, you know, we uh, could essentially do a lot of what a, a label could do, um, you know, if we, just from an artist management standpoint. And mm -hmm. then soon realized we're like, well, you know, we could try to put out music and then shop it to a label and go the fast route or, or continue to slow build it ourselves. And and maintain control of everything and ownership of of all the rights and you know creative control and all that stuff and so we decided uh kind of pre official black denim records to to uh, pursue that route and then during quarantine it just made sense to make it you know official and uh then we started black denim and we came out strong this year and are now kind of looking to the future next few artists okay so, do you have, uh, have you got any more artists signed on that label yet, or are you the only one? For, yeah, first first artist, uh, the flagship artist of, of Black Denim, and again, we're just launched this year, mm -hmm. like the January of, of this year, and so um, you know, coming out of COVID, slowly winding up, and now we're kind of looking at 2022 for um, to bring on uh, some more people. Okay. And I uh, see it said you're an equity partner. So what, what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I mean, they, uh, the, the, they've, you know, cool strategy model that, you know, has not uh, been done before uh, that we know of, you know, giving, um, you know, an artist ownership in, in his label, uh, you know, so, so, you know, like I mentioned my management and, um, and myself, we all are three owners yeah. in the in black denim record so I'm, i technically play dual roles as, as label uh you know owner with with them and also artist um okay and, but you know, and and christopher is ceo of black denim records um you know will handles you know he's the president of recorded music and you know it, they try to they try to you know position it so that um i have as much you know, creative uh, Input. You, know, you know, I'm not getting bog, bogged down as much. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, we all play a, a you know, role in making decisions for the label, but, um, you know, they're very aware that 
I can't get you know so caught up that I can't continue to to focus yeah. on the music. So yeah, um, we all we all share those responsibilities and um, yeah. Okay, will you bring if well if when you eventually bring other artists in, will you make them also equity partners, or are you going to just keep them signed that, that, to the, signed to the that label? Is, that is kind of uh, somewhat proprietary information, but it uh, it uh, there there is um, somewhat of a, of an angle there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Our artists yeah. helping them helping them maintain ownership of, of their catalog. Well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, to, to keep it more ethical, and to give uh, artists, like you said, more creative um, and more ownership of their of their music. Um, I interviewed a guy a few, let's say, about, probably about a month ago now. He has a label up in Canada, and that's the same sort of thing that he's trying to do. He's trying to build a label. He's actually started a label, and he's trying to build a label in a very ethical way where everybody knows exactly how much things cost exactly, and everybody yeah. takes a little bit of a percentage of that. And then, you know, if they, if they want to continue with the label, then they obviously, but you know, there's no big sums of money being thrown around to artists. They come in, they, they pay their bit. And then if they make any money, they get money back. You know, is that the same sort of thing you've got in mind? Sort of, but like, I mean, the thing you mentioned, uh, just, uh, the transparency with, we want with with everybody, um, and then building you know, building that trust with with every artist. That you know, uh, the biggest thing to us is that um, again, like I said early on, we felt like there was a deeper relationship. It was more family based, and so yeah, yeah. Whatever artist we bring in, we wanted to definitely have that vibe, and um, you know, uh, we yeah, have just so everybody's comfortable, trusting, and and feels you know, wants to stay ultimately. Yeah, yeah, that's the same sort of thing he said. I mean, most most of the artists, I say most of the artists he's actually signed at the moment, are his family. So his daughter and boyfriend, and her boyfriend or whatever, are a duo, and he's brought them on board as, as now part of the label. And um, I think it's, he said his sister-in-law or something is also singing on the label. Or, but there's a few different directions that they're going, but you know, it's more family orientated and, and they want to grow it with artists to keep it as a family, if you like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes it probably makes for a better working business model. You know, if everybody knows what's going on. I mean, I've managed a few bands myself and sometimes it can be a nightmare, you know, yeah. and uh, especially as the go between between the label and the band. You know, the labeler, the labeler telling you one thing and the band don't believe you. And then, you know, and you're always trying to be as transparent as possible. But if you can bring that relationship to you, you know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, then yeah. it's then it's gonna be beneficial for all parties, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. That's pretty interesting, man. I mean, uh yeah, I don't know how long that's gonna take you to set up. Like you said, you're the flagship artist, so. I suppose you've got to get your, we've got to get your stuff up and running and rocking and rolling, you know? Yeah. yeah Before you make any steps forward, I suppose. Somewhat. There's, there's a lot of strategies that play. Um, and luckily we have, you know, we've uh, built out a, a really good team uh, to on the label. So there's, um, there's, there's a lot of, uh, again, a lot of talent in terms of uh, not just in terms of musical, I'm good. I mean, like in terms of, what everybody brings, uh, you know, to the, yeah, to the yeah. um, from brand marketing and press. Yeah. Um, so is Mr. Durst any relation to Fred? No, <laughs> uh, you know, no, no, but he, he was, um, he has been in our, that's the cool thing too about, about the labels that um, every, all the owners have, have been artists or, or are artists or have yeah. been artists at this point. And okay. so that gives us a better perspective. Yeah. Yeah, he so Christopher's background is, um, you know, that he started off on the music side of things uh, yeah. as a guitarist and then, um, you know, forced to become lead singer and then kind of just a whole lot, you know, he he just wanted to play guitar and then, um, you know, moving forward in his career, um, most notably known um, as a rock photographer, uh, okay. like 
uh, everybody, Lady Gaga, um, Justin Bieber, Willie Nelson, um, a whole host of, uh, of artists. And, um, you know, then, then coming off the road, you know, family and uh, wanting to get into artist management. Yeah. Did he release any books of his photography or? Oh, yeah. I mean, his work's all over the place. Um, some of the iconic Willie images are, uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll see Christopher Durst with. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty interesting as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's nice to, uh, so he's got plenty of contacts then, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And it's nice to have a, 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 a photographer built into uh, manager of photography. <laughs> yeah, you can do all your photo shoots <laughs> on the cheap if, if he's not doing them for free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so I don't know what's next for you. I mean, you, you're touring this album now and it's probably going to take you into 2022, is it? Yeah, yeah, you know. I think that the plan is is to you know ride this wave of this album. Um, well, I think we'll probably be looking closer towards a twenty twenty three uh, sophomore album. But though, I mean, there'll be lots more music coming out over the next year in the form of singles and you know maybe some live EPs and and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of promo, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, like I said, it's been a tough year. I mean apart from finishing your album then how did you uh how did you cope with covid uh, with the lockdown sorry not fucking covid with a lockdown situation yeah you know it was uh you know at first i think everybody was in a lot of people were in the same boat thinking it was going to last a few weeks and then mm -hmm. turns into you know year <laughs> years at this point and uh, it just it, it was time for us to kind of re-strategize and rethink everything it um time to you know get this album um written and recorded and um you know there was a i don't know there was a, i mean I, I i i'm an optimist for the most part and try to look at the the positive of every situation and um obviously there was there was so much you know i mean i wrote a song wanna flies about some of those hardships of, of 2020 but um, you know, the fact that we came out as a duo and that turned out to be uh, one of the best decisions for us, you know, that was, yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, positives that came out of it. Um, I don't know if you heard the story about, um, our studio was struck twice by lightning while we were recording the album. Uh, okay. No, on top of everything else that was already going on. Yeah. Okay. Everybody was okay, I guess. Everybody was okay. Yeah, the equipment was was totally d destroyed, but um, and had to be replaced twice. Um, oh man! Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that you know, there's extra precautions and stuff put in place for for lightning now. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know that it strikes multiple times in the in the same place. <laughs> yeah, really, in the same place. So now you've got a lightning conductor on the roof, or what? Yeah, you know, it, it's Will's studio. He did, he did, had some people come out and, and do a whole bunch of technical things <laughs> to, to try to uh, prevent that from happening. And That's then, crazy, especially for it to strike twice. I mean, they say like they never strike twice, but <laughs> obviously in your case. <laughs> yeah, people keep joking. They're like, well, that just means the album's electric. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's definitely not acoustic. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's another thing too. We uh, added. Um, I started playing resonator guitar on uh, part of the shows now, um, which I've, I've never done before. And everybody expects me to play slide on it. I, I don't. I play slide on uh, a Gibson Les Paul Junior. But yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a it's a cool, um, a really cool thing. You know, making this album in the studio and during quarantine, not really having a chance to play on some of these songs live, just having to kind of imagine, you know, in, in a live context and then coming out and kind of figuring out how, um, you know, how these these tunes are gonna feel yeah, a lot. Yeah. It, it's turned out to be really cool. There's a lot of texture to this album. 
yeah, 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 a lot of layers, yeah. Did you do any sort of like live living room sessions during the lockdown then? Over yeah. Facebook or whatever, you know? Yeah, there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, Zoom uh, shows and a lot of uh, the, the, the drive-in shows, which are interesting. Um, a lot of, yeah, weird uh, sort of um, ways to, you know, mediums to perform through, but I don't know. I, I kind of, you know, I got really comfortable doing the, the Zoom shows. Okay. And going back to live was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A few people said that. I mean, uh, a big festival had just gone past uh, last weekend uh, in Wales, and it, it was limited to like 4,000 people, I think. But everybody was so excited to actually be amongst people again, you know? Because yeah. uh, because in the UK everybody everybody's been in lockdown for eighteen months, and now they've had a chance to get out and about and see their friends and and I mean the festival went down really well. So yeah, uh, yeah I don't I mean talking about COVID, have you had a vaccination? Are you a vaccination believer or? Well, I know it. I have to be in order to to uh, come to Europe to travel. So that was that was the. I mean, there was no thinking about it and you know even yeah uh, yeah no matter anybody's opinion like our whole team is yeah now i've been vaccinated and uh and uh is, is heading over um, yeah and it's so funny those even the vaccines uh, even with no uh live um supposedly no live uh virus in them they they wore us out well me wore me out yeah did you get sick uh you know or you just got like the you know the tired tired you know uh tiredness and yeah yeah uh, well i actually caught covid about now i'm looking at about 12 weeks ago i think yeah and um i was really really ill yes uh for about four weeks and then i started coming out of it and uh, now i'm i have to have physio and everything but i also had my vaccination of about two weeks ago i think it was yeah. Uh, oh man, I was really ill for like three days. I thought I caught COVID all over again. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. It can be pretty uh, taxing on the body. We had uh, some of our friends, um, some of our friends get it in just um, not, you know, be they were without like just you know energy and uh, they didn't have that spark. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. For yes. weeks or months afterwards. Well, after the injection or after catching it? After after catching, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I've got now. And my partner also. We both wiped out <laughs> extremely. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty tough one. So, uh, yeah, I think, hey, man, I think we've covered everything about your album and uh, some great songs on there. I've listened to it a few times now, to be honest. Thank and you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where you're playing in Holland because I'm actually in Holland, in in the Netherlands, you know. Yeah, where are we playing? Um, there's people keep asking in the show, the few shows we've done. Everybody is like, "Where are you guys going?" And I'm like, immediately, like just like looking off into space, like, um, Germany. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I can always look it up. But yeah, yeah. maybe I can come along to a show and uh, be good to have a chat with you face to face instead of Zoom to Zoom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But since as you're in America, I mean, I always throw a story in uh, at the end of the show. Uh, Sheriff Pat Garrett's revolver, the one he used to kill Billy the Kid, is actually going up for auction. Did you know that? I did not, no. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're, they're thinking that it's probably going to bring about two to three million dollars, which is a lot of money for a single shot revolver, you know. Quite a bit, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, where are you? Austin, Texas, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, everybody's got a gun in Texas, haven't they? Austin-based. Uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be, I would I would second guess it. Because <laughs> they're allowed to conceal and carry in Texas or not? You know what? Uh, I'm not sure on that because everything has changed. Oh, it's okay. Like everything's 
like again just changing um um changing government thing yeah. there's, there's like I, I feel like it's been back and forth over the past you know two years uh i can't keep up with where we are right now yeah yeah what's your stance on gun laws then uh dude i don't have any stance unfortunately do you carry a gun everybody everybody does do what you would do what you need to do um <laughs> Uh, you and know, I, wouldn't tell you if I, I wouldn't tell you if I did. <laughs> you gotta find out. Yeah, you, well, you can't take it to Europe with you anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe a baseball bat or something like. Yeah, that. yeah, that's no worries. All right, then, mate. Well, it's been good to chat to you. Eventually, we we got it all sorted after your, <laughs> your nightmare on the bus, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, how was your festival? Being patient. How was your festival? Have you played already, or have you got to no, go back? No, not yet. Got to, yeah, got to head back. Ah, right. Okay. Oh, then I won't keep you then. All right. Well, listen, I will look forward to uh, some more music coming out from you. Know, I hope I can chat to you again. Dude, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, we'll be putting uh, out a song uh, when we're heading over called "Remnants." It was supposed okay. to be our first album, and uh, we ended up saving it as a single for our UK EU uh, okay. adventure. All right, so, cool, man. Yeah, I'll look out for it. So, all right. Well, take it easy. Get back to your festival. Go and kill him. Not, not, not literally with your gun, but uh, <laughs> with your guitar. <laughs> yeah. Knock him dead, man. All right, cool. All right, nice to speak to you, Zach. Likewise. Thank you, man. <laughs>